All right, so this is the second part of lesson number one in Math 100. Uh, we'll continue uh, with the top of the second page of the uh, lesson one worksheet or the notes, okay? Number seven, um, the se seventh type of fallacy or faulty argument is called the straw man argument. Have you seen or have you, have you, you know what a straw man is? An example is a straw man is, you know, it's something that you create. You attack that instead of the real person. Okay, so um, look, Einstein's relativity theory is evil because it tells you that there are no absolutes, you know, and just imagine what happens if there are no absolutes. There is no right and wrong. There's no good and evil. Everything's relative. That's what Einstein said. So he can't be right. His theory of relativity is completely wrong. So don't let your physics teacher say it's true. Well, okay, so what's happening here is that there is a reality here, okay? There is a claim. This may be true and you're rejecting it because somebody told you it's similar to this, similar to this straw man, and it's easy to attack the straw man, okay? So this is called a straw man um, attack or a straw man fallacy. Uh, basically, here's a definition of that. Uh, it's attacking a distorted version of or a misrepresentation of some claim that happens to be true, uh, but the, the, the claim is, you know, the, the false. So attacking a distorted version of a misrepresentation of some claim in order to show that the claim is false. Okay. Now, um, in the political season, you will see this quite a bit. And in fact, I mean, this is what a political debate is all about. You take your opponent's view, you sort of distort it any way you like so that it'll be easy to attack. Okay. So for instance, if a, politi a political uh, opponent is saying, um, you know, let's lower taxes, for instance. Uh, then what you can say is, well, you know what, that such and such person is um, trying to reduce taxes. Now that sounds good, but you know what, there will be no more police, no more fire department, and, and no more road construction, and he doesn't believe in any of these things, how terrible, you know, so it's easy to attack that distorted version of, uh, of uh, somebody's claim, and so when that happens, this is called a straw man fallacy. And you'll see more examples in the book. Number eight, right? Um, correlation. And um, you can call, call this by different names. Uh, correlation, causation is what I'm calling it. Uh, you could also say this is a fallacy of the type correlation does not imply causation. Or sometimes people say association does not mean causation. And all of these things mean the same thing. Basically, if A and B are related to each other, and if data show that A and B are related to each other, then A must be the cause of B, or B must be the cause of A. Okay. No, no, no. These things are correlated. Uh, that means if as one increases, the other one increases, or as one goes down, the other one goes down. Okay. Certainly you can see a correlation, but that does not mean that one is a cause or the cause of the other one. Let me uh, be more specific. Okay. So here's a classic example. People, the sociologists and educators have discovered um, many times over and over, but a study after study shows that kids who play the classical piano do better in school. So the piano playing mix makes the, the person smart. Is that wrong? Well, I'm not sure. Okay. But what we do know is that you cannot claim based on this data, the correlation, just based on this data, you cannot claim that the piano playing is the thing that's making that child smart. Even though the, um, the playing the piano part and doing better in school are correlated with each other. Okay. And so let's say, you know, people have discovered and, and sociologists and um, education experts have discovered that, um, that and indeed children who play the classical piano tend to do get better grades in school. Okay. Now, does that mean that the playing the piano is the reason for the better performance in school? And the reason, I mean, the reason this is a good example is because the answer is maybe, but not for certain, okay? It may be other reasons, there may be other reasons why the, the child is doing better in school, okay? For instance, uh, maybe the families who can afford the piano lessons uh, could afford tutoring and are maybe more privileged. Maybe live in better neighborhoods with better schools, right? So um, the association is certainly there, 
but that doesn't mean that one is a cause of um, that relate the correlation. Who knows, maybe uh, you could even argue just as foolishly that uh, when somebody do better in somebody does better in school, then um, that uh, call, want that causes that student to uh, want to play the piano. Well, see, that doesn't work the other way. But there is no reason to reject that silly argument if you believe in the other way around. Okay, so um, this is the claim, and you will see this uh, later in our in our semester in this course when we study statistics, because this is a, a very um, common thing to be uh, used in um, in different arguments you know people see correlations and say see there is a proof that this is the reason for something else um, claiming that when two things are related to each other one is the cause of the other okay so let's say again uh, in a very hot days a certain baseball team tends to win just in hot days okay does that mean that the heat is helping them to win maybe Okay, but there may be other factors, right? Uh, and I can give you uh, example after example of this type of fallacy, and which is um, which is extremely important for you to recognize and detect. So hey, you know that that's a fallacy. Don't don't believe that. Maybe I should give you another example, right? Uh, maybe it's going to come up later. Uh, people have found out that um, during the time in the past uh, decade when the classical concert attendance is, uh, is uh, increased, then a certain type of expensive toaster also sells better. Sales of expensive toasters and attendance at classical music concerts is one the cause of the other. Okay. Well, the, uh, the, the, the association or the correlation actually is explained by the fact that those are the good old days when uh, people actually had more money. You know, we have this recession followed by um, you know, good economic times and so on. So in good economic times, people do tend to go to uh, music concerts and then tend to spend money, not just on toasters, but a bunch of other things. Okay, so uh, association or correlation does not cause, uh, does not mean causation. All right, number nine, appeal to popularity. This is also a fairly standard thing. What does that mean? When something is popular, it must be right. Well, I hope you don't believe that. Right? Um, but if you look at like a car uh, advertisement on TV or in a magazine, so this is the most popular car, right? As if that's like the best car because most people drive that. And then of course they have fine print. But here's another example. It's okay to drive at, you know, um, 80 miles an hour on a four or five freeway because everybody's doing it. Well, because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. Uh, it's okay to cheat in taxes because everybody's doing it. No, 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 you can't make that claim. So an appeal to populace, uh, popul population, sorry, it should be appeal to, see that this is what happens when you are trying to talk and write at the same time. Um, it should be appeal to popularity. An appeal to popularity is a type of fallacy in which claiming in which you are claiming that something is true based on the number of people who believe that or because many people believe that, okay? Um, all right, number 10, the last one, red hearing. Did I say hearing? Herring, okay. Herring is a, is a type of fish. And the idea is um, if you want to break into somebody's house and if there's a watchdog, what you want to do is to distract the watchdog so that the dog is not going to bark at you. How do you do that? Well, you give the dog a certain thing to, to, uh, that is very attractive, like a fish. Okay. I'm not sure why it's herring, but anyway, you give a red herring or a, some sort of a, a distractive element to the dog and the dog gets excited about that. And then he's not going to, he or she is not going to bark at, at, at you. Uh, it's called diversion. This is what magicians do. They will get your attention to something else while they're doing something else at another place, right? They will let you focus on the right hand, their left hand is doing something else. Here's an example. Education is a human right. That's why I support private school vouchers. Well, okay, so you see what's going on here? Uh, 
Education is a human right. Ooh, that sounds really good. That's diverting your attention. Their, your attention to something else like an important thing like human right. And then they will start talking about something that's sort of related to it, but not exactly that. So um, when, when they represent, when they make a claim, um, and then they are trying to divert your attention to something related to their claim. See, this is what they're trying to, to, to tell you, okay? They want you to vote to support private school vouchers. But in order to do that, they will refer to something that everybody agrees on, like the basic human right of education. And then they will divert your attention to that, and then they will try to win your vote. And so that is called the red herring uh, fallacy. It is to prove something or try to prove something by showing that something similar is true. You know, something similar that most people can agree on, right? So you can say, well, you know, war is terrible. Nobody wants war. And therefore, that's why I am uh, whatever, okay? So um, something related to war. And that's called the diversion or red herring. Okay. Now, um, I have to warn you uh, that these are not... Um, Exo this is not an exhaustive list. There are many other ones. And, and depending on who is writing the book, there may be 12 or 15 types of fallacies, or maybe there are seven. Um, other books include other fallacies, such as appeal to emotion, that's certainly a type of fallacy, and appeal to uh, consequences. Uh, some of these types may be overlapping. Okay, So it's not always easy to say this fallacy is of this type and of this type, maybe um, maybe a certain fallacy or a certain claim, maybe two or three of these things at the same time. So the fact that a statement contains a fallacy is something that you should be watching out for. But now again, I have to emphasize, just because somebody has a, the faulty argument of fallacy, that doesn't make the conclusion necessarily false. Okay? But you do want to uh, be aware of these types in order not to be fooled by these, okay? But remember this logical structure to all of these, like, you know, this one, if A and B are related to each other, A does not mean that B, it, uh, it does not have to be the cause of B. Appeal to popularity is the one that says, um, everybody or many people believe A and therefore A must be true. You know, red herring, um, A must be true because something related to A, which is B, is also true, you know, and that's not the case. Okay, so that sort of concludes uh, lesson number one. And now what I want you to do is to go to the module for lesson one and look for the blank sheet called worksheet one, okay? And that worksheet is something that you're going to fill out. For this one, uh, there are lots of uh, 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 examples that you can write. And it, there is not going to be right or wrong answers for lesson number one. So now, take some time and work on um, worksheet number one. And uh, once that's done, you may want to go looking at the uh, homework of the uh, beginning part of chapter one in your book. Okay, so that's it for lesson number one. I will talk to you later.